So there's a lot to talk about. Everybody can hear me. Everybody can see me. Don't be crying about me shouting because I'm not. Okay, good. Let me just um, fix these settings real quick so it's not going as fast. Give me just a moment. Make sure my chat settings are where they need to be. Okay, cool. So the chat is slowed down. I just want to give everybody a chance to get in here. So we have about 2,000 viewers already. So let me just give a few more minutes before I start on the topic. Let's see. Let me check something. Um, oh, we got some super chats coming in. Uh, let's see here. Kaya Kendrick sent four ninety nine. She says, "Hey, Auntie, came from Discord, looking beautiful as always. Thank you so much, Kayla. Um, Kaya, sorry, Kaya. I appreciate it. Let's see here. Um, June sent four dollars. Thank you for the super chat, June. Isaiah Video says, "Love you, T. Can't stay on now because I'm at work, but I'll be sipping after the out after the upload. That's what's up. Thank you for popping through. I appreciate it." What's up, Rejoice? Shout out to all my mods in the house. Okay, great. So it's been so much mess going on. So I'm going to go ahead and get started here. Um, it's been a lot of stuff going on, actually. It's been crazy. And I've just been trying to keep up with everything. Yesterday, because if you guys don't know, I am starting to do more interactive stuff with the Discord. So I've been really this weekend trying to learn Zoom and I'm going to be doing virtual games. So we're going to be having like virtual trivia games. Some will be for prizes, some won't. But it's just another way for us to just, you know, get to know each other more. And so far, everything has been going really good on Discord. So I've been busy with that. And then on top of learning how to DJ, because DJing is not as easy as people make it seem. It's an artwork, you know what I'm saying? It's a lot of work. So I was spending the time yesterday um, trying to go through my music catalog, put things in order. So that way when we do our Friday night parties, um, everything will be where it needs to be. So that's what I was busy doing yesterday. Um, let me check something here. I'm trying to see, because it's saying that the... Hmm... I want to make sure that everybody on YouTube can see me. Make sure that live is going on. Okay, good. I found the, the link to the live. So it is going on right now. I just wanted to make sure everybody could see me. So anyways, that's what I've been busy doing. So I was really busy yesterday dealing with trying to get the music cataloged and trying to get everything together. And so I didn't go to bed till like 3. So I had no idea this huge blowout between Candace Owens and um, Cardi B. I'm trying to so, see, because it's saying, hold on. Okay, let me mute that. So people are like, oh, T, why are you not posting this? Where are you at? I was busy doing stuff for my Discord group. You know, so I hadn't even been on Instagram since earlier that day. And I ended up, um, you know, going to sleep. So I woke up this morning to some bad news. Um, one of my bloggers is going through something tragic. So that hit me. Then I get onto Instagram and then I see um, everything that went down between Cardi B and Candace Owens. And I was just kind of in shock, like, what the hell? So I just been literally spending the past few hours trying to figure out where everything started, how all this stuff went down. Um, I did talk to Cardi. You know, it, it's just... It's so much stuff going on, and we live in such a tumultuous client, uh, climate right now. It's crazy. So I want to go ahead and just kind of break all this down, okay? Break down what all happened. And for me, when it comes to politics, I try to be fair. Even on my Discord group, we have a political section. And even it took me a while to even want a political section because I know how tumultuous that can be that topic um it's it's so red and blue it's so right versus left and i didn't want that on my discord and but i also wanted a place where people can talk freely and talk about certain things but there has to be a respect factor okay because i have people who are trump supporters who support me 
I have people that I know that are Trump supporters who support me on social media, on Instagram. I follow them. And then I have, you know, people who are Democratic supporters who support me as well. So, and I don't want it to be a situation where even on my Discord, just because you're a Trump supporter, you're automatically quite racist or homophobic. Just because you're a Democratic supporter, you're automatically coined stupid or a coon or brainwashed. I don't want any of that. I feel like in this day and age, we should have the right to decide who we want to be a president, who we want to vote for as a candidate, without just all of this drama and beef, okay? So it was very, very crazy. And then one thing I also did, because I'm a researcher, I'm not one of these people who just watch you know, five, ten minutes of something and then form my own conclusion. I watched the entire interview that Candace Owen did with Ben Shapiro because that's what it is to be a journalist. That's why I love blocking people when I post my podcast and people will come on there and comment and you're not watching the full podcast, you're instantly blocked. Period. No questions asked. Because when I post podcasts on my YouTube channel, those are for people who follow me on my podcast. Those are for people who follow me on Apple, on Google Podcasts, on Anchor, my truck driving females. Those posts that I post on YouTube, those snippets are for them. So if you don't have the audacity to sit and listen to what I said about Summer Walker or Future in its full context, this is not the channel for you. Okay? Um, I do deep an uh, analysis here. I don't just go out for the mainstream narrative. I don't do sound bites and clips. That's not how I roll. I say that for them other dumbass YouTubers who listen to sound bites and get into their feelings. I'm not that person. So when I saw the clip of Candace talking about Cardi B, I wanted to know the full context of her interview with Ben Shapiro. So I sat and I watched the full hour before I even came onto this stream, okay? So that, that's just how I get down, you know, and if people are offended because I take time out to actually gather the facts, I don't give a shit. This is not the page for you, right? So I watched that, and I've also noticed that it's been this whole thing of people also attacking, you know, Cardi, and Candace has been coming for her for a while, and Cardi has ignored her. And it's been other conservatives that have come for her for a while, and she's ignored them. So I think from what I researched is this whole situation was the perfect storm, right? So Candace Owens does an interview with Ben Shapiro. She takes that snippet of her and Ben talking about Cardi B. It goes viral on Twitter. But at the same time, Hennessy Carolina, Cardi B's sister, is being harassed by some Trump, uh, some Trump supporters at the beach. And I believe this was in the Hamptons, but I might be wrong. So it was just kind of a perfect storm. For what led up to everything, right? So, I want to go ahead and just show you guys my display. Because I'm going to be kind of going through this step by step. Because I want everybody to get everything in full context, okay? So, let me go ahead and move this over. And I'm going to play the back and forth. Let me first... Trying to figure out how I want to play these clips. Okay, let me show you guys the clip that Cardi B posted of what happened to Hennessy Carolina and her girlfriend at the beach, okay? And then she also went on to, like, show voice chats of Hennessy talking about the situation as well. It was, like, this huge back and forth on Twitter. It was, it was crazy just trying to catch up to all this stuff. So let me go ahead and show you guys my screen here. Okay. So this is the situation here with um, Hennessy and the Trump supporters. So Cardi B says, you want to know why Joe got to talk to me, Candace? Because I have the number one song, and yet my sister can't go to the beach in the Hamptons without Trump supporters harassing because they were by themselves. And Santa Claus was harassing my sister's girlfriend, all because they are Afro-Hispanic, all because they're an Afro-Hispanic gay couple. So here goes the video here. Move your vehicle out of here. Move the fuck out of my face. Okay. Don't ever come yeah, to a female pressing her while I'm not here. I'm near you. I don't give a fuck. Right. Stop the fuck out my car. Stop the fuck out my car because I'll pay my fucking taxes, nigga. Back the fuck up. Get away from this. Get the fuck out my face. You in my vehicle. Shut the fuck out. Shut the fuck up, you Shut up. Suck my dick. All right. Thank you. 
Very nice. Bitch, I got a strap. Right. Yes, I got a dildo. I'll show it up your ass and your husband's ass. Shut up, Suck my dick, bitch. Get the fuck out of here, Karen. Some people. I hope you know. I hope you know Shut that you will be up. online and your husband. And yep. And guess what? Trump, Trump, Trump. And guess what? I got. Okay, so you guys just saw that. So now what I'm going to do is play you guys um, this YouTube video. And it kind of shows the back and forth. Let me come on display real quick. Give me just a second. Let me close this up. Okay, so I'm going to play you guys the YouTube video. So after she posted that, she posted that in response to what Candace Owens was saying about her on the Ben Shapiro show. So I'm going to show you guys that clip. It's going to be a full video. It's going to it's going to take about 18 minutes, but I want you guys I ain't got shit else to do. I'm sure y'all don't got nothing else to do, so honey. We're going to watch the back and forth. It's going to show the clip of Ben Shapiro and Candace Owens speaking, then Cardi B basically responding to that on Instagram live, and then Candace Owens coming back and responding to Cardi B. So I want this to play out in its full context. Um so let me go ahead and get this video up for you guys here. And I'll go back and read some more super chats. So just give me a moment. Uh, look, somebody says, this is why I love you, T, because you give us the real. Thank you. And, and that's what it's about. It's about providing information on both sides. You know what I'm saying? I might be cool with Cardi, but I'm going to show information on both sides. I, I don't, I'm not going to play favorites. We're going to put everything out there and we're going to have a dialogue. So let me go ahead and play this. Give me just a second here. Make sure this is lined up correctly. Okay. So y'all go ahead and listen to this. I agree with your assessment about Cardi B. Um, it is one of the biggest insults. If black Americans are not insulted by the fact that Joe Biden, who has been hiding in his basement um, you know, for the entire year, made an appearance to come out because he was going to do an interview with Cardi B, do we, do we have nothing better to offer? I mean, this would be akin to Donald Trump saying, I'm going to give no interviews, but he came up and he decided to give an interview to Justin Bieber. Right? I mean, which I actually, Justin Bieber, I am sorry. I know you are a Christian man. I don't want to put you in the same boat as Cardi B. Um, but it, it would be absurd. Right? White America would go, what, what is this? Why are, why are you being interviewed by Justin Bieber? And it's because you're pandering, right? You're pandering. You look at Cardi B's Instagram, you see she has millions of followers, and you think, okay, this is an illiterate person, and if I, if I appeal to this illiterate person, and she does, oh, grr, like she literally did uh, uh, in, in the middle of this interview. You know what? If I kill somebody, I got to go to jail. You got to go to jail, too. And they think she's cool, she's hip, just by sitting here and, and taking this interview, black people will vote for me. It's basically saying, black people, you are stupid, you are dumb, and you're so foolish. I mean, do you think, what if she just said in the middle of the interview, Joe Biden, can you name one Cardi B album? So, uh, I'm not going to show my face in this video. I look like shit. I feel like shit. I'm a little sick. And I don't know why the devil been fucking trying me today. But I'm going to give demons a response today. I'm going to give the devil a response today. So let me tell you something, right? It's not a secret that I use my platform for people to vote. I love politics. I endorse the Democratic Party. Everybody knows I don't really fuck with you like that. And y'all don't see this because, you know, y'all don't be paying attention. But I get harassed by Trump supporters so much. And there are some Trump supporters that are like celebrity Trump supporters. Like, that they just have like a huge platform. And they be coming for me every single day. They be degrading me, they be making fun of me, everything. I ignore them, I don't give a fuck. Only time I never, I, that I be going hard, let me tell you something, shit gets so intense that a Trump supporter Posted my address and encouraged people to box my home, to fire my, to to put my house on fire. I literally hired a private investigator and served him with a warrant and arrest this boy. Mind you, this boy was a fucking teenager. His parents were fucking shook. Anyways, so today one of the most popular Trump supporters, which is Candace Owens, really. Yo, she really said some real nasty things about me. Because Joe Biden, and 
Joe Biden sat down with me to speak with me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I saw that interview. And you want to know something? Two weeks ago, Fox News were really talking shit about me too because Joe Biden sit down with me to do the interview. But let me tell you something, right? Why wouldn't Joe Biden sit down with me, Cardi B? I have millions of followers. And I pay millions in taxes. I have the number one song in this country. I got the number one song in fucking the United Kingdom. I have the number one song in Australia. I got the number one song in New Zealand. I'm, I'm, I'm heard all around the world. So just like I can make people pop their pussy and have a good time and make them feel like a bad bitch, I could also encourage millions of followers to go vote. Now you're saying that Joe Biden is pandering because he's using, you know, like a popular figure, figure like me. All right. But your president, the guy that you fucking love so much, he panders as well, too. And ironically, this is the reason why I have to fucking stand up. Because let me tell you something, bitch. I pay so much money in taxes. I'm a good American. I don't bother nobody. My little sister, she's a good American. She don't bother nobody. She barely posts on Instagram. And this girl can't even go to a beach with her girlfriend today and fuck in the Hamptons without getting some, without getting fucking harassed by Trump supporters. My sister was at the beach. Her girlfriend went to the car, and these motherfuckers started fucking talking crazy to my sister's girlfriend. Then my sister girlfriend went, and you know Hennessy's crazy. They started telling my sister, "Oh, why are talking Spanish? Why right, this, this, and that?" When my sister went, they found out. They talked down because they already, they, they already know, they already know what's going on. They already know, they already catching on that niggas is getting recorded. So the same day you harass me, and the same day that my sister's getting harassed, a bitch that pay her taxes, a bitch that have a fucking criminal record, and you out here wondering why Joe Biden is doing a fucking interview with me? Because you want to know why? Because no matter how much money I make, no matter how hard I work, I can't fucking even be. A, I can't be a fucking free American. My sister can't even be a fucking free American. You got this fucking Trump supporting family harassing two lesbians. The fuck? Yo, I was just watching on Navy Young, right? I was watching on Navy Young, and let me tell you something. Trump has a fucking commercial on Navy Young talking about Joe Biden has picked a, a Kamala Harris to be vice president. There were, I guess, four candidates that were running to be vice presidents. And they were Hispanic, and Joe Biden didn't pick them. Hispanic made $2.4 billion to the economy. Is Hispanic people not enough for Joe Biden? Why Why is your president doing that type of commercial and putting that shit on Univision? Why are you pandering? Why, are you, why is your president fucking race baiting against Hispanic and black people? The people that get killed the most by police, bitch. You want to call me a dumb bitch? You want to call me illiterate and everything? Girl, you're going to be pimped out by a white man. You have been this man cheerleader. You're a beautiful black woman. You talk great, amazing. And you fucking support. Are you be out here supporting Trump? And this nigga didn't even have the decency to let you talk at the Republican convention. But you know what he did? He put the general attorney that's in charge of Breonna Taylor case. A Brianna Taylor case that hasn't said a word, but haven't said a word to his own people. A black man that hasn't said his, a word to his own people by a black woman that got killed in her house sleeping. But this thing is gonna go. A, a, a general attorney for a motherfucking, uh, uh, for one of them, them, like, you know, not them big states like that. And, and uh, he picked him to talk in the fucking Republican convention. And not you, that you've been sucking this nigga dick for years. My side uses you. You want to call me dumb? I'm not getting picked out by a white man. And you don't see that. And I don't know what black man broke your heart. 
I don't know what black woman licked your pussy wrong that you hate your kind so much that you, you talking about Joe Biden be pandering, your fucking president can pander because nobody fucks with him. He was fucking crying because football players don't fuck with him. So what are you talking about? I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna keep telling my millions of followers to vote. And so we get your president out of here. I'm tired of this. I'm tired of this. Your fucking former president told people to drink bleach. What? You wanted an answer for me? Candace Owens, you've been coming for me for such a long time. You got the answer today. The only reason why I answer you today is because of the shit that happened with my fucking sister. Other than that, bitch, wake up. Wake up. Go outside. Go outside. A nigga just got shot seven times in his back. The president haven't said nothing about that, but you, but you know what your president is out here doing? He's, he's fucking, he's fucking doing speeches talking about why they need to take poor people from fucking white suburban country, from white suburban um, uh, neighborhoods. Those are not the only Americans. White suburban Americans are not the only su Americans in this country. Shit. You wanted an answer? Here you go, you have it. Now leave me alone, bitch. I'm about to go drink some fucking chicken noodle soup. Okay, you guys can see me now? Okay, we're back. Okay, good. Okay, so everybody hit refresh. I don't know why it stopped, but it looks like we have about 100 viewers coming in now. So let me go to the... Okay, so everybody can see me now. Okay, good. Okay, let me make sure that it's working. It's, it's kind of laggy on YouTube. I'm so irritated with these streaming things. Now, Twitch is crystal clear. So, Twitch looks to be working. There's about 128 people on Twitch. Um, let me see if Facebook is back up. Can Facebook keep... Okay, good. Facebook, you guys can see me? Perfect. Okay, so they're saying on Facebook it's kind of laggy. I am hardwired in, so I don't know, but I'm just going to continue with the show. I'm also recording this on my on my screen, too. So, okay, we're all back. Okay, cool. I see the numbers are jumping back up. Okay. So, like I said, I'm also recording this on my computer. So, if I have to, I will merge the two streams together and then upload it into one big stream um now i played cardi b's whole thing you have to have it in context like why y'all complaining and you know saying that she shouldn't she's responding to somebody and i'm also going to play the full context of candace owens responding to cardi b like can y'all just calm down and enjoy the stream if you're not here for a breakdown go elsewhere there's plenty of people streaming about bullshit about who's fucking who and who's sucking what. Go watch them. We're here to figure out this whole mess that went down between Cardi and Candace Owens and to have an adult discussion about it, okay? So now we're back. If it's laggy, I'm just going to continue and this will be recorded on my desktop, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and now we're going to go and listen to what Candace Owens has to say in response to what Cardi B said about her, okay? during that eight minute rant. So let me go ahead and pull up my screen. Give me just a second here. Okay, so let me get Candace Owens in focus. Oh, what is up Instagram? I'm going live on Instagram. This is the second time I've ever gone live on Instagram, but I just felt like I really wanted to clear the air on this Cardi B nonsense um so first and foremost cardi i watched your story and it sounds very funny um first off <laughs> i'm saying it's funny because you just it's just ridiculous to me that you even take anything that i said as offensive when i'm telling you the truth 
Um, and I think, if anything, you're only upset because people are telling you on Twitter that you got dragged, because you did get dragged, because you aren't educated when it comes to politics. That's first things first. Um, I was not, I'm sure Ben Shapiro was not, we were not meaning to attack you. We're just simply telling the truth, which is the fact that Joe Biden did not spend the whole year in his basement to come up because he's a big Cardi B fan and sit down with you. He thinks you're an idiot. And, you know, I just am encouraging you to stop proving him right when you say ridiculous things like, I had to sit down with Joe Biden because my sister got attacked by a Trump supporter, Santa Claus, making it seem like Trump supporters are homophobic. A little education for you, Cardi B. Uh, Donald J. Trump is the first president that's ever gone into office in support of gay marriage. So, you know, those eight years that your presidential candidate Joe Biden spent um, as a vice president with Obama, they didn't support gay marriage going into office. Obama changed his tune on gay marriage in his um, second term. So the whole idea of Trump being a homophobe is a bit pointedly ridiculous and shows how uneducated you are. Then you came and you were talking about ta raising your taxes when you were on talking to Joe Biden saying that you want your taxes lowered, but at the same time you want universal health care. That's ignorant and stupid. And Joe Biden knows it's ignorant and stupid. Even all the people that want free health care and universal health care acknowledge that tax rates have to be astronomical to be able to support that. So you're talking about a 74% tax rate. You continually keep saying you have a number one song. It means shit. Nobody cares about a song about your wet ass pussy. Excuse my language for my followers. Um, being, num being number one, I have a number one song in the UK, I have a number one song in Australia, I have a number one song in New Zealand. That has nothing to do with black America and whether or not you are helping or hurting. Right now, you are hurting black America. Okay? When you stand on a platform and you pretend to care about black men, when you ask Joe Biden, what are we going to do about these black men dying? He should have asked you back, what are black men going to do about black men dying? Because 94% of black men are killed by other black men. Okay? We don't have an issue with police officers. In fact, if you go into those inner cities and you go into those projects, they need more policing. So you're a fraud. If you're sitting here saying, making it seem like you are, you're afraid of police officers. Are you afraid of your husband? You're more likely to be killed by your husband, way more likely to be killed by your husband than you are by a police officer. And you know that, right? You know that black men kill more white men. You know that police officers are killed by black men 18 and a half times more, right? So don't use your platform and 75 million people to make it seem like police officers are the issue. You're uneducated. I mean, that is just what it is. You are uneducated. And I don't have a problem, by the way, with musicians and rappers and hip-hop artists dabbling in politics if they're sincere. What I mean by that is, are you talking to people on both sides? Are you trying to actually get a, an informed understanding? Or are you just being a mouthpiece for one party? Charlemagne the God has multiple people on his platform. He's talked to Republicans. He's friends with uh, Senator Tim Scott, talks to him. He's a, a Trump supporter. He's had uh, vice presidential candidates, presidential candidates on his show, on The Breakfast Club. When he's a serious, he asks serious questions. He doesn't sit down with Joe Biden and say, oh, grr. in fact, Joe Biden wasn't comfortable when Charlemagne the God was sitting down and speaking to him because Charlemagne the God was asking so many difficult questions. He wasn't just giving him a Santa Claus list like you are. I want this, I want that, I want this, I want that, and none of it makes sense. If you're serious about politics, if you're serious about trying to use your platform for good, then you need to educate yourself. That's literally all anybody is saying to you is that you need to actually educate yourself and do the work. By the way, I'm not in your zone, you're in mine. Okay, so I get tired of your commenters and your fans saying, oh, she's clout chasing. I'd be clout chasing if I was challenging you to a rap battle. I'm not doing that. You're in my area. You're in politics. You're embarrassed because you realize you know nothing about anything when you're on Twitter. You actually told a, a lie just now to all of your followers. You said, oh, Trump, uh, A, you said Trump told people to drink bleach. He never did that. Then you said Trump laughs when black men get shot by police officers. How do you just put out a lie like that? How, how do you consider yourself to be a serious person when you just outwardly lied to all of your followers? You know he's never laughed at a black man dying at police officers' hands. You know that for a fact. You can't pull a clip. Not even CNN, with all of their bullshit and lies, has ever claimed that Donald Trump laughs when black men die at police officers. But you told that lie in a tweet. Why did you tell that lie? because you're a fraud. So I'm calling you out on being a political fraud. You pretend you want to help, you don't. You don't. You don't know why you're a Democrat. You have no idea why you hate Republicans. You have no idea why you're on the side of the party that enslaved black people, that segregated black people, and standing behind a man that supported segregation. Joe Biden supported segregation. He said it's what black people wanted. So let's just recap all of that. 
You're concerned about homophobia. For the eight years that Joe Biden was in office, him and Obama didn't support gay marriage until the second term, but not when he was running for the second term. They didn't support gay marriage going into that office. You claim that you're concerned about racism and dying black men, yet you want to defund police officers. That makes entirely no sense. You cannot defund the people that are actually protecting black people. Black people need more policing in their neighborhoods, not less of it. And by the way, in those neighborhoods, there are black police officers that are dying because it tends to be that police officers look like the neighborhoods that they're policing. So you are actually saying on a platform for more black men to die, for taxes to be raised, right? For a man that has a very atrocious race record to be put into office who looked at you the entire time like he was confused when you were talking because he knew that you were nothing but a puppet for him to be able to get a platform. That's it. You're a puppet. They use you. Okay? And you want to sit here and talk about Trump using me? Or, or, or what, are you, what, are you, what are you talking about? Using me for what? I don't work for the RNC. I don't get paid by the Trump campaign. I say what I believe. You don't know what to do when you're looking at a black woman that's free. That's what your problem is. I am telling you who I support and I'm educated. And I'm challenging you to become educated. I'm challenging you to sit down with black conservatives, okay, and have a meaningful conversation and a dialogue about what you actually want and to actually try to understand the economics behind what you want and to try to understand why it is you're actually supporting a man that does not care about black lives and never has and has been in office for decades and hasn't changed anything and you're blaming Trump? It makes no sense. You hate Trump because they told you to hate Trump. You gave me no valid reasons for hating Trump. Not a single one, not even one valid reason for why you hate Trump. You just think you're supposed to because you're a puppet. That's what happens when you get big. Look, Cardi, I enjoyed you a lot on Love and Hip Hop. I thought you were hilarious. Second I first saw you on TV, I said to my cousin, she's gonna be a star. She has that it factor. She's very funny, you know, she's confident, and she says ridiculous things. I think you belong on TV. I don't believe you belong in the realm of, realm of politics unless you're willing to get serious about it. In conclusion, tonight I was just signing books and I'm gonna send you one because you need one. You need to learn. You need to black out. You need to black sit. You need to learn about the real history of the Democrat Party. See that subtitle, How Black America Can Make, to make Its Second Escape from a Democrat Plantation. You wanna know why it says second, Cardi, and not first? Because we were enslaved by Democrats, not Republicans, okay? We were enslaved by Democrats, not Republicans. So I'm gonna sign you a copy, get in touch with my agent, get in touch with your agent, I'm gonna send it to your house, okay? How's that for WAP? Okay, bye. All right. <laughs> Let me come back on the screen here. Give me just a second to turn this off. Okay. So, like I said, to be fair, I played both parties' responses to each other. And then, of course, there was some back and forth on Twitter and things like that. Um that you guys can go and see for yourself. So let me start by saying this. Let me pull up this screen real quick. Okay, looks like everything is running good. Okay. So let me start by saying this. Um, there's a lot of things I agree with, I agree with with both parts, okay? And that's the one thing when I did speak to Cardi is like, you guys both have a lot of good points. I understand why the Democratic Party, people like Joe Biden, are trying to go on Cardi B's platform. Um, is because she has a huge fan base. Let's keep it real. She has a huge fan base, and her fan base, the size of that, it can influence people, right? That is why we call celebrities influencers. They can influence you to, you know, make a decision on things. So... The thing that's so interesting about this entire situation with with Candace and Cardi B is that Candace also makes a lot of good points. And I would be fake to say that she doesn't. Some of the talking points that Candace has even made, I've made myself. And people have come at me like, are you a, are you a conservative? Are you a, a Democrat? I'm neither. I'm team just common fucking sense. And I've always been. You know what I'm saying? Even on her uh, Twitter page, Candace had posted the Malcolm X speech. I believe it's the ballot versus the bullet. I believe that was the name of the speech. She posted that on her Twitter page. I've also posted that on my Instagram page. And I've talked about that here on YouTube. So I'd be fake to say that she makes points that I don't agree with. I definitely agree with some of her points because I've said that in the past that I don't believe 
that celebrities should be the voice of the black, you know, black people. You know what I'm saying? They need to if they're if they're really serious about trying to include black folks in the conversation, then they need to talk to people who are versed in politics. There's nothing wrong with saying that. Malcolm X said that, I don't know, 60, 70 years ago or something, honey. Okay? So he said that years ago. So, and, and I agree with that. Because I feel like when I did watch Cardi B's interview with Joe Biden, it was more superficial. It gave me Hillary Clinton going on to the Breakfast Club talking about there's hot sauce in her bag. Swag. And I said that during that live stream. Like, that. that's, you know what I mean? No. Don't sit here and quote fucking Beyonce songs, bitch. We want to talk about policies and what you're going to be able to do for people, particularly the African-American community, right? So to me, you know, I, I wish that they would do that. I wish they would, you know, go on to platforms with people that can hold their feet to the political fire. But with that also being said, I don't like the fact that she tried to compare Cardi B to Charlemagne the God. First of all, Charlemagne the God is not a musician, okay? He's not an actor. He's a commentator. He does commentary just like somebody like myself. He runs the Breakfast Club. Well, he doesn't run it, but he's on the Breakfast Club. So on the Breakfast Club, that is their job because they are in media to bring in both parts, to bring in, you know, Republican candidates and, and Democratic candidates and things like that. That is their job as media to be as fair, quote unquote, fair as possible. Cardi B is an entertainer and a celebrity, and she's a regular citizen. So if she wants to side with the Democratic Party, she has every right to do so. Just like guess who? Kanye West. That would have been a better that would have been a better comparison, Candace, for you to use Kanye West. Because what I notice is Okay, Kanye West can get up here and say, I'm Team MAGA, I'm a Trump supporter, I love my president, even though my wife doesn't support him, I support Trump, and nobody from Trump's side has an issue with that. All of a sudden, it doesn't matter if this particular celebrity has a voice because it's a voice that you want to hear. It's a voice that you support. But when on the Democratic side, they have a voice like Cardi B, all of a sudden, it's a huge issue. And that's what I don't like is the hypocrisy. And this is what all this bullshit has turned into. It's a bunch of hypocrisy. It's a bunch of backbiting, infighting. And these are real people's lives that are going to be affected this November during the election. And we're worried about the beef between fucking Candace Owens and Cardi B. This is insane to me. And, and people have come at me and been like, oh, you should drag Candace. You know, you're from Minneapolis. And, you know, look at what she said about George Floyd. And even in them, I didn't drag her. I said Candace is entitled to her opinion because she made some decent points. I didn't agree with everything she said during her rant on IG, but she made some points. See, I'm the type of person I can take bits and pieces from everybody. I don't throw out the baby with the bathwater. I may not agree with everything that Cardi B says, but I'm not going to throw her out with the bathwater. I may not agree with everything that Candace Owens says, but I'm not going to throw her out with the bathwater either. And that's the problem is we live in a world where you have to pick one side or the other. There's no in between. Fuck that. I can take a little bit from this person and that person and what, what this person is saying is making sense, what that person is saying is making sense, and I can come to my own conclusion. But we live in a world where you have to pick. You know what I'm saying? Where it's okay if it's Kanye West big enough the president because you're team Trump, you're team Republican. But then when Cardi B does the same thing, it's an issue. And that's what I don't respect about all of this because it's just turned into something ugly. Then you have people saying, well, um, Cardi B shouldn't be talking. She's not a representative of black people. She's not a real black woman. And I've always said I consider Cardi B a Latina. Okay? I've always said that. But she's using her platform for something bigger than herself. So I have to respect that. You know, even if you don't agree with how she came across in that interview with Joe Biden, with you know, her saying, occur, and, you know, the mannerisms and stuff like that. At the end of the day, that is who Cardi B is, and that's who Cardi B has always been. She's always taught politics. She's always tried to, you know, have an opinion and, and you know, be for, for the people. 
even before she had her huge platform and her big celebrity, she's always talked about things like this. And I think that when we sit and we knock somebody and we say, you don't have the right to have a voice because you're not as articulate. You're not as well spoken because you curse because the way that you carry yourself. That's wrong. I think that's wrong because sometimes I get attacked like that. That I'm not the most articulate person on YouTube. Sometimes I mix up my words. Sometimes certain words I can't pronounce. But it's okay. It's just who I am. And I'm not going to apologize for that. Like I always tell people, if the, if the way I speak, the things I say bother you, get the fuck off my channel. It's that simple. And let the people who accept me for who I am, let them come. So I don't think it's fair. I would never knock Candace and say she shouldn't have a right to say what she has to say because she's articulate. Or like how people will try and say because if you're articulate, you sound like a white person. That is so ignorant. Why does being articulate and astute, why, does, why is that tied to whiteness? Why is that just not tied to how that person speaks? So if I'm not going to knock Candace Owens for how she chooses to carry herself, I'm not going to sit here and knock Cardi B. Just like I had to check Sukiana. You're not going to come for girls who carry themselves a certain way. There's nothing wrong with carrying yourself classy. If you want to be a hood rat and spread your fucking pussy for the world to see, that's your business. If I'm not going to knock you and slut shame you for that, don't talk about girls who carry themselves a certain way. Don't talk about girls who feel like, you know what, I'm better than just twerking and singing about my pussy. Everybody has, you know what I'm saying, has the right to be, is what I'm trying to say. Okay, and I'm so tired of this whole thing where we're just so quick to just tear somebody down because they're not like us, because they didn't grow up like us, because they're not from our same environment. We could learn so much from each other if we would just take the time out to really just look at people as people instead of coming into situations with all these defenses up. If you start to really peel back the onion, you'll find out you have a lot more in common with certain people than you do not in common with them. And I think at the end of the day, Candace wants, you know, things to be better in the black community. And then so does Cardi B. They both want a lot of the same things. It's just that Cardi B does not know how to express herself as well as a Candace Owens. And that'd be no different than if we took Candace and we put her in the rap world. She couldn't express herself lyrically and freestyle and, and, rap a, and, and write a rap in the same way that Cardi B can. So it's just two different worlds. And this is why, again, you know, we have to be mindful of how we tear people down. Because in one breath, y'all will say, you know, Cardi B has his vulgar song. You know, look what she's teaching the youth. This is degenerate behavior, right? Everybody was very upset with the whole WAP song. So in one breath, everybody will knock her. But then in the same breath, when she tries to use her platform for good, then it's also a knock. So at some point in time, she feels like she just can't win. And when we start knocking people, then it just makes them feel like, well, then why should I care? How many times have we said that rappers need to use their platform for something bigger than themselves? Why don't rappers talk about things that are affecting the hood? Why are, why are they not doing more for the community? And when you have rappers trying to do that, then we sit and we knock them. Okay? Same with Kanye West. That's why I never too much go in on him when he goes on his little spiels. That is his opinion. If he wants to support the president, that is his business. Just like if she wants to support Joe Biden, that is her business. When I was growing up, I grew up in an era, and I see it's totally different now, where one, people didn't talk about politics because it was a very divisive, you know, situation. So like in schools and stuff like that, you just did not get into political debates, right? But on top of that, one thing that was always reiterated to us growing up is that everyone has the right to support who they want to support free of judgment. And somehow in the past few years, that has gone out the window. If you're team MAGA, if you're team Trump, you're automatically a racist, you're a homophobe, you're a hillbilly, you're, you're banging your cousin. It's all these stereotypes attached to Trump supporters. If you're a Democrat, oh, you're not woke, you're a coon, you're a bedwinch, you're on the, you know, the Democrats peen. And it's, it's all, this, all these negative affirmations. But when we were growing up, you just agreed to disagree. 
And you made your political choice and that was it. But you know, everything starts at the top. And that's the part that bothers me. This divisive energy that we have permeating our country, it starts at the top. He's created a lot of this division, Trump, unfortunately. He's created a lot of this. And it just trickles downhill. I mean, the whole situation, the whole back and forth to me is sad. And that's why I, I never get involved because I know there's people who support me from all spectrums. And I can take my emotions out of shit and listen to all sides. And I know for a fact with all this drama that's gone on, Cardi is hurt. You know, because it's like this spun into some shit that she wasn't trying to get it spun into. She was trying to defend herself. But then you also have Candace is like, okay, cool. I, I, I've gone viral now. So, of course, she's feeding off of this and she's making the memes. And, you know, she basically drug Cardi and everything else. But at the end of the day, it really should be about the people. And encouraging people to go out there and vote. Regardless of who you choose to vote for, at the end of the day, stop looking to Candace Owens, Angela Stanton, Cardi B, Kanye West, The Breakfast Club, The Shade Room, and whoever the fuck else to lead you. Do your own damn research. Find out about the Democratic Party. Find out about the Republican Party. And stop looking for people to lead you. That is the main problem with everything. Everybody's looking to these these personalities as if they're Jesus Christ themselves so honey I just I could go on this topic forever I'm not gonna but that is my thought on everything because I know a lot of people were asking you know what did I think about the whole situation how did I feel about it like I said I didn't even know everything was going on until this afternoon I didn't wake up till like one in the afternoon and then I was just inundated with all of this stuff. And it's, why are you not talking about this? Why are you not posting this? And I'm like, well, damn, give me a moment to fucking wipe the coal out my eyes and go brush my teeth. I don't even know what the hell's going on. My life does not revolve around social media. My life does not revolve around Cardi B. My life does not revolve around Candace Owens and whatever else is going viral. I have a real life outside of social media. And I'm never going to speak on something until I have all the facts. Until I watch both sides and that is why I took time out to watch her entire interview with Ben Shapiro because I didn't want to just go off of this small clip about her talking about Cardi B and I thought the interview with Ben Shapiro was very decent she hit on a lot of good points you know but again people the only thing I can say is that I beg you guys to do your own research to do your own due diligence and stop waiting for celebrities <coughs> Excuse me, and personalities to lead you. Because if you're waiting for somebody else to lead you, you're going to end up getting led astray. And that's real talk. Let me go ahead and um, pull up this stream really quick. Let me see if the stream is still working. Let me make sure this sound does not pop on. I'm just pulling up my um, YouTube stream. I want to check it out and make sure I haven't froze. We have about 9,000 people watching. Make sure y'all hit the like button, please. Don't be on here sipping slow and then not hitting that like button and showing love. So I, I just want to thank everybody who's here. Um, let me go ahead and try and get to some of these super chats here. Um, Yardley Mos Mosley says, WAP, W-A-P, making black people vote for Joe Biden. LOL, ha, 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 love you, T. Love you, too. Thank you so much for the super chat. I appreciate it. Um, shout out to all the new members. Um, I found out the way that you had to join the membership. You have to be on your phone and you can hit the membership button. If not, um, I also put a link to either the Patreon or the YouTube membership. It will be in the description of this YouTube video, this live stream or any of my YouTube videos. You guys can click the description and you guys will find the link to be able to join the membership for discord. Um, Let's see here. Baby girl Lily says, people do not understand. It's not the first second you see or hear, but the context of the information. Wishing you the best. Keep up the good work. How do we get onto Discord? Um, I just made an account. Um, yeah, just 
join the membership and then you'll get the link to the discord but thank you and that's the problem with today's society people would rather sit up here and just get into their emotions as soon as you say something that that they don't like as soon as you say something that makes them uncomfortable, they automatically want to shut down. As opposed to listening to the entirety of what that person had to say. Even while I was playing the Cardi B clip, all I saw was a bunch of people complaining, tell her to shut up, I hate her accent, she's annoying. You're missing the points of what she's saying. When I was playing the Candace Owens clip... Oh, she's just a black girl who wants to be white. She's the white man's whore. She's a coon. You're missing the point of what she's saying. So again, if we could just take emotions out of things and just go in with a with an open ear, we'd be a lot better as a society. And that's real talk. Um, let me see here. Shout out to Jasmine Johnson. She sent forty nine ninety nine. Thank you so much for the super chat. Jasmine says, T, I definitely agree. We need to stop trying to fit into two boxes. Not everyone thinks the same, but we should have the same goals as a team. Uh, oh, as a teen through middle to high school, we are confronted with politics and debating. The real America is showing. I agree, and thank you so much for the super chat. I truly appreciate it. Um, Chiandra says, Candace could have made her point without shading Cardi. That Justin Bieber is a Christian line was unnecessary. Love you, T. Exactly. You know, and they both threw shade on both parts. You know, some people got mad because Cardi had said something. Because Candace is pregnant. So congrats to her. She has a baby on the way. Um, Cardi has said something about her baby is doing the WAP and some dry ass, you know, coochie. And so, you know, Candace was upset about that, clearly. And so she had clapped back to Cardi. But... Candace was also throwing shade, you know, calling her illiterate when the girl's not illiterate, calling her, you know, dumb and stuff like that. And the, the Justin Bieber thing. So they were both being shady towards each other, you know, but it's just the way that Cardi B does her shade. It's a lot more vulgar. So then people try and act like it's worse because when Candace does her shade, it's more articulate. Either way, it's shade. Either way, you're being, you know, you're, you're disparaging the other person. Um, Mr. GC says over 85k view hit the likes. Let's get at least 8,000 likes. Thank you so much for the super chat. I appreciate it. Yes, hit that like button, please. Um, Tom Tim Entertainment says, Hey T, I love how unbiased you are. You are truly one of the rare ones. Thank you so much and thank you for the super chat. I appreciate it. Um, let's see here. Shelby sends 20. She says, I just want to put it out there that there's a large percentage of the Democratic vote comes from African-American women. Also, African-American women are the largest group of growing entrepreneurs. We are well-informed voters. Thank you so much. Thank you for that super chat. I appreciate it. Um, let's see here. Lavender Brown says, Candace doesn't care about black people or, <coughs> excuse me, or she wouldn't say Republicans care about us either. Thank you so much for the super chat. I appreciate that. Hi, guys. I uh, sent a message and a super chat says, hey, lady in red, Candace could have DM'd her instead of humiliating her like that. Yeah, she could have. But, you know, that's that's the problem is we live in a society where people are just trying to go viral. This was a viral moment. This is the same woman that was not invited to the um, to the RNC. And a lot of people were clowning her about that. OK, so it's like. What can I do to get a viral moment to kind of, you know, shift everybody's attention from the fact that she was not invited to a big event such as that? Well, let me go at Cardi B. And like I said, it was kind of the perfect storm because she was ready. You know, the interview that she did with Ben Shapiro was before all of this, you know. But when she posted that clip and that went viral, plus with everything going on with Hennessy, that's what kind of forced Cardi's hand to respond. So it ended up giving her a lot of damn press. You know, and so again, that's one thing that I've always said is that Cardi needs to be mindful of who she responds to because, again, they poke at the bear because they know she has a huge following. Candace has 2 million followers. Cardi B has 14 million. This is now a national story. This is on CNN, Fox, MSNBC. This has become a national story now. Whereas if Cardi didn't respond... It had just been a story on Ben Shapiro's YouTube page. So, again, she know, she knew what she was doing, you know. Um, let's see here. Cobb, I don't even know how to pronounce your name. I'm going to just say Cobb 
says hurricane laura hit my city and your videos really kept my spirits up i love you congratulations on almost hitting a million subscribers thank you so much i appreciate it thank you for the super chat thanks for coming through it's a lot of, it was like x's in her names i just didn't know how to pronounce it um crystal geo i think i pronounced that right because she has an x in her name too she says Every truth is a half truth. People need to realize their perspectives are not absolute. Thank you so much and thank you for the super chat. Um, let's see here. Just minding my business says I love your channel. I'm also a spiritual person. On December 21st, a lot of bad things will happen. Thank you so much for that super chat. Um, you ain't got to wait till December 21st, sis. There's going to be a few things happening um, in October. And in November, I've been hearing stuff about staying away from bridges, especially the Golden Gate Bridge. So I've been keeping up with a lot of different dates that people, I'm not one of those people who really go off of dates, but when I hear dates, it makes my ears perk up. So there's been people talking about the bridge situations around the country and things going down in October. I think because we live in such a highly political climate right now, it's going to get a lot worse before it gets better. And it's getting scary out here. It's getting very, very scary. So thank you so much. I appreciate it. Um, let me see here. Okay, I read that one. Um, Milky Chan, thank you for the super sticker. She sent a $20 super sticker. I appreciate it. Um... Yasmin says sent a ten dollar super sticker saying thank you, thank you so much. I appreciate that as well. Let's see here. Queen B says I don't know what I'm. Go I don't know what's going on on YouTube. YouTube is messing with my ability to donate, but they won't stop me. T today I got time, cuz LOL. Thank you so much and thank you for the nineteen ninety nine super chat. I really appreciate it. So we had so many messages on here. Um, I'm trying to go ahead and read. Some of the comments. Oh, somebody says F Trump and his token with her burnt edges. Um, Sanasa said, I actually think a lot of black people are Republicans, but we blindly vote Democrat year after year. Please research. Um, Amanda says, we need to protect our kids and the Democratic predators. Stacy says, I like Candace, but I don't. <laughs> Um, Devin says I'm voting for Joe and Kamala. Oh, says voting for Joe and Kamala is martial law. <clears throat> um, Megan, you're you're gonna be out of here. Don't come on my uh, page trying to promote other people's channels. So bye. I've told y'all about that. Don't bring up other YouTubers in my channels. None of that shit. So you're blocked. I don't know why I have to say that every stream. Do not bring up other YouTubers on my platform, period. Because then y'all twist whatever is said on my platform to a lovely T done says something about this YouTuber. Stop posting other YouTubers' channels, their names, any of that stuff while I'm live streaming. And if I see it, you're blocked. Period. Um, so let's see here. Justin says, why even engage if you're pregnant? It's unnecessary stress. Um, SBW says Candace's shade in speech was subpar at best. So it looks like, you know, it, it's, it's divided. You know, you have some people who are for Candace and some people who are for Cardi. And again, that's okay. That's how it should be. People should have a right to stand with whoever they want to stand with in this situation. And if you see both sides, that's fine as well. Where it really matters, while all these people are hooping and hollering, hopefully they go and vote. That's where it really matters in the grand scheme of things. Let's see here. Um, Jay Jones says, going through an abusive breakup. Needed this live. Um, we have three months until the lease is up. Wow. I'm sorry you're going through that. I'm glad this live stream can bring you some type of peace. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm really sorry. Hopefully, once the lease is up, you'll be able to get up out of there. Um, but if you, if it's that bad, if it gets even worse, definitely try and contact some shelters in your area and possibly see if you can leave early, maybe talk to the landlord about breaking, you know, your part of the lease or maybe moving in with some family. So just take care and thank you so much for the super chat. 
Um, Bree from NYC says, sending love as always. Politics has become so toxic, sadly. Candace does make some good points, but she contradicts herself with the defense of Trump, especially saying that racism doesn't exist. Thank you so much, Bree. Thank you for that super chat. And um, yeah, it, it, it's become very toxic, very, very toxic. And it's sad. It really is, you know, and it's almost like when you see somebody wearing a MAGA hat or somebody putting a Trump, you know, Trump 2020 sign in their yard, it, it like it causes like this angst now. Whereas a few years ago, somebody could put, you know, Obama 2020 or, you know, whoever 2020 or, well, not 2020, but like 2008. You know, when you would see people putting signs in their yard with who, who they wanted to vote with, no one cared. It wasn't like this level of dread. You didn't judge the person who lived in that house. But now when you walk by somebody's house or drive by somebody's house and they have a Trump flag, it's almost like, you know, like you're looking at the house with suspicion. And it's sad that it's gotten like that. It's really sad. It's just, I just, I don't know. I'm just, it just, it really bothers my spirit just how divided we are as a country. It just does. And it's a lot of groups to blame for that. You know, like I'm, like I've told y'all before, I'm all for Black Lives Matter. You know, as far as like people. Yes, I don't like the whole all lives matter. If we're talking about black people, that's what the topic is. But now as far as the group Black Lives Matter, I have my issues with them, and I've said that. They came to my city, caused a bunch of fucking chaos, defunded the police, crime is, you know, rising. Just all types of messes going on. And then a lot of times when I'm seeing, like, these Black Lives Matter events, I'm not even seeing black people anymore. It's white, white people, white liberals. Well, what happened? It's just been hijacked. And it's just, it's just being used now to just cause a bunch of just political chaos and, and just upheaval. People are donating money. Nobody knows where these donations are going to Black Lives Matter. I don't know. It's just been crazy. It's been real crazy. Um, Surrey says, T, can I be a mod? Yes, I'll, I will make you a mod. Okay, Surrey, you're a mod. Do your thing, sis. Um, so, like I said, it's just become very, very divisive in this country, you know, just with a lot of the political, up, you know, unrest, um, the things going on in Portland. They've literally started a city within a city, you know, the police shootings, just the violence, the chaos. It's, it's a, right now, America is such a scary place to be. It really is. This is not the America that I grew up in. I would have never thought that the country that I grew up in has turned into this. And then on top of that, we have the whole C-19 that we're fighting. So it's insane. So I want to go ahead and move on. I've been on here for 42 minutes. It looks like everything is going good right now. Everybody can see and hear me. I want to talk about the Dana Chanel situation. Now, um, if it's buffering, just go ahead and hit refresh, you guys. Because I want to try and get through this. Um, let me read this super chat real quick. That Tap TV sends five dollars. Says, "Hey T, I'm a logical, critical thinker as well. Truly believe that the Democrats and the Republicans are two wings of the same bird." Thank you so much for the super chat. I appreciate it. Um, Shannon Pierce says, "Democrats in general have exploited our pain. Republicans have ignored it and claimed it non-existent. I am independent and I will always be." Thank you so much. And a lot of people don't even talk about that. About that, there's you know kind of a third group. The independence. So thank you for bringing that up, sis. I appreciate it. Um, Chiandra sent another $20. She says, female truck driver here. I know that's right. I'm I fuck with my female truck drivers. That's why I do my podcast. They're for y'all because y'all love the podcast. Y'all like to listen while y'all drive. So thank you. I appreciate that. She says, from what I've experienced with these Trump supporting drivers is that once Trump won, they got real bold saying shady stuff in public. Had one tell me to go back to where I came from this January. Wow. I'm sorry to hear that, sis. You know, and you know, in your field, it's rare. First of all, it's rare for women to be truck drivers. Let's keep that real. But especially black female truck drivers, that's rare. So sometimes, yes, they get emboldened. They feel like they can talk down to you, even though you're doing the same job that they're doing. So kudos to you. I respect my female truck drivers. I go hard. I didn't know I had like this whole sub 
you know, this whole subset. But there are like a whole subset of black female truck drivers that they're tea sippers and they go hard. And I really appreciate you guys because if it was not for men and women such as yourself, we would not be able to get the supplies that we need. You know, people don't realize that that um, items just don't appear on store shelves by the you know snap of a finger. It's because somebody had to drive those items into town and unload the packages and and you know whatever is on the back of the flatbed they had to unload it into the stores so thank you guys for being essential workers and never letting up i appreciate it so i always love when my female truck drivers come true come through that's what i was saying earlier that you know if you're not a, a member or if you're not following my podcast do not comment on any podcast clips that I put up on my YouTube channel. If you don't have the, the, the gumption to take time out to go listen to a full podcast, you shouldn't be commenting. Those podcast clips are for people who listen to my podcast. So that's why I, just, I go through and I just block folks. This is a podcast. This is not a regular YouTube video. And I do those podcasts for my truck drivers. So thank you. Um, so let's... Oh, you're a black female truck driver too, Claire? Okay. That's what's up. We have a few. Okay. That's always awesome. Yeah, one of my really good friends, he's a he's a male black truck driver. And I remember when he first got his CDL like a little bit after high school. And he's been doing his thing for years. So it, it's not an easy job. It's not an easy job. They're on the road a lot. They're away from their families. You know? So, no, I, I love it. I love it. Yes. Thank all the truck drivers out there. <laughs> I'm glad I can bring attention to that field because a lot of people have no idea, you know, but there are black women who are out there doing their thing, man, doing that whole female truck driving thing. <coughs> um, so let me go ahead and get to this Dana Chanel. A lot of people have been asking me to um, speak on this. And I initially did not want to talk on it until I had more information, until there was like just more info out there. Concerning Dana Chanel. Now, I don't follow this woman. Let me go back. I have no flashback, which I can go back and look up the story. Um, this is how Dana Chanel was first brought to my attention. Let me see if I can find this clip here. Give me just a second. Because I've only done one video on her, and this was from years ago. Years ago. Let me show y'all my screen really quick. This is when her and Quay and a few other people had gotten into it because she was upset about uh, black comedians dressing like women. So let me go ahead and show you this. Let me move this over. Okay. So this is what first led me to Dana Chanel back in 2017. So she made a post and she says, well, I might get, I'll get crucified for this, but as an Afro Latina, I truly believe it's poor and degrading representation of the power of black men, of the power of black men's talents, who I, who I am, my family, my kids will become your actors capable of being the next Denzel, the next Michael B. Jordan. You guys are capable of taking your talents beyond social media. This is not cool propaganda at its best. Destroying and feminizing the black man's image. This is the sunken place, LOL. It's disheartening. So many people support and encourage them to act like females when they are using, when they are saying that's how us women think and they think it's funny. So let me go ahead and click up off of this. So that was my first introduction to her. And I did a video on this a long time ago. And you know, I did, I understood where she was coming from, but my issue with Dana Chanel at that time when I did my video was her hypocrisy. I didn't know a lot about her. I just knew she was a, you know, so-called good Christian woman. And so the more I was researching her and everything she had to say about Quay and them, I found a lot of hypocrisy. Now, what a lot of people didn't know at the time is that she's really good friends with Young Thug. And at that time... Young Thug was promoting men wearing full dresses. Y'all remember that Jeffrey album cover? He was in a full dress. So I would have respected her if that's what she was really about. But the fact that you're trying to go in on these men about their what they're doing comedically. But meanwhile, Young Thug is dead serious about wearing a, a freaking dress. So I thought that was very, very hypocritical. So 
I had called her out on that. This was back in 2017. You know, if you're going to stand for something, you need to stand for it. Don't don't condemn one, but then when it's your homeboy wearing a dress, it's all good because he's a famous celebrity and you're rubbing shoulders with him. So that kind of rubbed me the wrong way, and I kind of felt like she was on some hypocritical stuff. Made my video, kept it moving, ain't thought about her or nothing she got going on since then, right? Then it came out that basically her, I guess she got married. She's married to some guy named Prince. Prince Donnell, I believe. And I think she, she's pregnant now, too. They're having a baby. So she got married to him. And so they had started all these companies. And so the companies that she started, um, one was Sprinkle of Jesus, which is like a Jesus app. And then she was also doing like a lot of these seminars and just different things to make money. She started her own tax business. And so... Recently, I would say in the past, I'm just trying to make sure I have all my clips together here. So recently, as of August, I was contacted by a page called the Dana Chanel Scammer page. They had sent me a friend request. And at that point, I wasn't really approving people, but I did approve them because I was like, what is what's going on here? So they had sent me a bunch of info. They sent the shade room a bunch of info. And so we had all posted about, I guess, all these people coming out, basically alleging that she was scamming people. And um, now that same Instagram page has been deleted. So I don't know if it's because Dana Chanel's fans flagged them or what happened. But let me go ahead and show you guys um, what was being reported. Give me just a second here. Okay. So this is what the Shade Room had posted, and they're saying scam allegations against Christian entrepreneur Dana Chanel pick up steam. One of her alleged scams was recently shut down. So that's Dana Chanel and her husband. Um, so Dana Chanel scammer page says we shut down the we shut down Dana's latest scam to get more money to fund her scams. Um, then they say light work courtesy of Godzilla, aka Dana Chanel scamming. Great work. Protect people at all costs. So then they go on to like post a bunch of details. I'm not going to read that. Um, but these were just like um, letters that people sent in about Dana Chanel. So here's a short one. It says, my name. I am the director of accounts here. Do you currently have the YouTube link that you're referring to? So I may forward this over to our investigative legal department. We take the credibility of our partners very seriously. We have funded we have funded any clients from Miss Dana Chanel. Any additional links or YouTube videos would be greatly appreciated. So this was just a lot of people, you know, coming for her. This is one of her apps that she had out. So basically, long story short, let me come back on the screen. They have now started some type of um class action lawsuit against Dana Chanel and I think also her husband and so what they're saying is this let me go ahead and pull up some more stuff so they're basically saying that people were spending upwards of five thousand dollars to attend some of her seminars upwards of five thousand dollars to pay for Dana Chanel to create an app for their business and then on top of that they were saying that Dana Chanel was charging a monthly fee to keep the app running. So it's just been a lot of stuff. And then on top of that, there was another man who was Dana Chanel's husband's best friend. And so he's also from Philly. He does credit repair. And he said that basically Dana Chanel and her husband um, learned a bunch of stuff from him, took notes on everything he was doing to repair people's credits, then turned around and started their own credit repair business. So it's been a lot of just crazy stuff coming out about Dana Chanel and her husband. So let me go ahead and play you guys that clip of the friend here. So give me just a second. So this was Dana Chanel's uh, husband's ex-best friend. This is what he has to say. Is this the right one? Yeah. Called his mama, Miss Alicia. Hey, Miss Alicia. By the way, Miss Alicia, Donnell's mom, that was like my mom at one point. 
She would come over, clean our house for us, all that stuff, right? So I hit up his mom, and I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, mom. Well, now she's Miss Alicia. I don't call her mom anymore because she she clearly disowned me as her like big son. So I said, Miss Alicia. I said, Miss Alicia. You know your son just signed a 360 contract with a girl he only knew for fucking four or five months. His mom called him and cursed his ass out. Like she didn't want nothing to do with Dana. She thought this 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 shorty was just a scammer, whatever. Wow. The answer on my phone calls anymore. He was texting me back like every two, three days. They wasn't inviting me down to the office no more. Like their whole vibe changed when I didn't want to give them 50% of my business. So then I started noticing them some things. Some of my vendors that I use when I fix credit, I started seeing Uncle Magic's email pop up on the CC emails. So I'm like, yo, this man literally took everything that I ever said or did around him and went and tried to go start his own shit. So I wanted to test them, right? So I asked, I know, I said, yo, bro, since I'm fixing your credit for free, can you, um, can you, uh, uh, give me a shout out? Can you give me a shout out? Yeah, bro, I'll give you a shout out. Don't worry about it. Then the next day he's like, oh, bro, I'm sorry. I can't give you the shout out. Um, I, I'm in contract with another credit repair company, so I can't promote or endorse any other credit repair company besides this one. So I said, what are you talking about? You know what I mean? What are you talking about? So then he was like, oh, well, I, like, we started our own, our own credit repair company, so we don't need you anymore. So I'm just like, wow, you let me fix your credit for free. Then you started your own credit repair company to lie and act like y'all were the ones that did that. And then you took my platform, my brand and everything that made my company what it was. You try to steal it and create your own. And now everybody like if you go on the Dana scammer page, people are literally following lawsuits every day. They're following FCCs, stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? So it, it, it's crazy how karma works. And, and, and. Okay, so you guys just heard what he had to say. Um, if YouTube is buffering, try and, um, just try to go ahead and refresh. But like I said, I'm recording this whole screen. So I'll, I'll upload this whole video on YouTube. So don't worry. So on top of that. Dana Chanel does videos and she does seminars where she basically preaches to people and she talks to them about, I guess, being a good Christian and running a business and she has her Sprinkle of Jesus app. And so she also does a thing where she films herself, where she has these, I guess, business meetings slash seminars with some of the people who work for her. And so there's a video that kind of went viral of her berating a young mother now, this woman um, is a young, I think she's like 19. She has a child. And Dana Chanel is literally talking to her crazy. You know, just talking down to her, berating her, you know, trying to tell her about herself. But not in a caring manner. Not in a manner that you would think you'd see for a good Christian woman, right? So give me just a moment here to set this up. I'm making sure everybody's back in. Okay, so it looks like everybody's back. Okay, good. Okay, perfect. We're going to get through this stream, honey. I don't care. We're going to get through this stream. So, let me go ahead and hit refresh. Okay, perfect. So, I see myself on YouTube. So, now, let me play you guys this video of Dana Chanel going off on this girl. Give me just a second here. Okay. So this is this young girl that she's going off on because the girl happened to look at her phone and I don't know if she's maybe checking on her baby or whatever, but she looked at her phone and Dana Chanel went off on her. Okay. Okay. You are a very young woman. Okay. To me, you're still a child. Just trying to figure this stuff out. Just because you're a mom 
does not mean that you have a certain level of maturity level and it takes people who actually love and care about you to actually sit you down and say, Leanne, you have to stop for a second. Let's reevaluate, okay? Let me, and I'm gonna work, I'm gonna problem solve with you right now, okay? So the first issue that I have is when someone approaches you about behavior that essentially they're not fond of due to rules or things that you put in place. This wasn't the first time you had a conversation about. The worst thing to do is to find an excuse or any excuse to go ahead and validate your actions to do the very thing you were not supposed to. No, not yet. Um, and what I mean by that is at that point in time, because you have failed your team beforehand, uncross your hands, because you have failed your team beforehand, you being on your phone, do you understand what I'm saying? Very disheartened. For all of you guys who don't know, her brother's in the hospital, not doing very well. For all of you guys who may not know, she has a child that is being raised by her mother. That her mother believes in her enough to raise her child for her. That they do not trust that you as an adult, as a growing adult, because you're not an adult yet to me. As a growing adult, they cannot trust you to have self-awareness and self-control of when to use your phone or not. Do you desire to be looked at that way, Leanne? Do you desire to be babysat or feel as if you are incompetent so somebody has to watch you? And guess what? No one will. We got too much going on. Too much money to be made. Too many other people to help. In order to be sitting here worrying about if you on your phone doing what you're supposed to be doing. But if that ever happens again where you lack self-awareness, I ain't babysitting nobody like that. I'm not doing that. And I'm telling you to your face, Leanne, I'm not doing that. I respect you enough to not treat you like a child, despite you being one. Because the goal is not to stay there. Do you understand? Yeah. You have to become a woman. There's a little girl looking up to you. Imagine her hearing this conversation and said, "Mommy, you got fired, or they didn't want you a part of the the family business because you couldn't be on your because you were on your phone." You know how disheartening that would be to her if she understood. So I, I'm not giving you a pep talk or even putting a solution in place. Your best solution is you. Do you hear what I'm saying, Leanne? This is your first job, correct? Be patient with her, okay? Everybody be patient with her. That's only when she resists the knowledge and the information and the growth that we need to have a conversation. It's her first job. She used to help out dad with the bouncing castles and all that kind of stuff, but she is a young woman a very young woman with grown woman responsibility. She, she is fighting to understand how to do it. And there was nobody there to walk her through situations. But we won't baby walk you for long. You have to, you have to do that, okay? And so um, you're going to pray it out. Today, humbly, to we ask you to forgive us. Oh, we. Oh, we. That bothered me. That bothered me a lot. Okay. First and foremost, that's a young woman right there. She's a mother. And attitude reflects leadership. How can you sit there and talk down to somebody in that manner? In front of other people. And this wasn't like a video that somebody snuck and recorded. Dana Chanel recorded this herself. And uploaded this onto her own page. To further shame the girl. Okay even if the girl is not quote unquote listening. And she was on her phone. What does her personal family business. Have to do with the situation. What does the fact that her mother is helping her raise her child or that the fact that she was helping her father, you know, run his company and the company, you know, suppose he wasn't doing too well. What does that have to do with the with the situation at hand? A true leader is not going to demean you. 
A true leader tries to resolve conflict, tries to resolve things. They don't go out their way to demean and belittle and to create more chaos and animosity and conflict. So what I saw there is not the actions of a true leader. And on top of that, Dana Chanel is talking like she's 55 years old. From what I hear, she's what, 26, 27? If that young girl is 19, you're nothing but a few years older than her. I wouldn't even talk down to somebody in their damn 30s. Because at the end of the day, we're all learning and growing. So why are you talking down to her like she's a child, like she's two or three years old, when she's only a few years younger than you? So I, I wasn't feeling that at all. That wasn't cool. And then on top of the stuff that she's being accused of doing and, and supposedly, allegedly scamming people. And let me let me also go to, to, to show y'all one other clip. Because I was trying to figure out where did this woman get her cosign? That so many people are falling for this whole let's go ahead and follow her. And I noticed that, you know, TV shows like The Sister Circle and many others, even like when you Google her name, she's done a lot of different appearances They've also co-signed her without really doing a thorough background. So let me go ahead and show you guys this. This was her on the sister circle. And a black all owned online beauty supply store, Curl Bible Dana Chanel to the circle. Yeah. Welcome to the show, beautiful. Can I clap for myself? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so you heard that statistic by 2053 black wealth zero. What does that make you feel like when you think about that stat? Well, first, I think it's preposterous. Yes. Because I'm just letting you know I ain't never going back to where I came from. I'm so I'm not a part of that zero percent. Yes. And neither are the people that are rocking with me. So um, what's interesting is. I don't believe that I can change the world. Mm -hmm. I'm actually changing the households that make up the world. Yes. And so for me, when I when I think about the businesses that we've built, I remember having like a real conversation with my family. Yeah. And we took a drive down the hood. And we started writing down every single business that we realized haven't moved in years. Mm -hmm. So the tax preparation, the credit repair, the beauty supply store. And so we started masterminding ways that we can build up the business, make it successful, mm -hmm. and then build out the blueprint so that we can give it to families like ours. Because the problem is that, not that we're not capable. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. We're literally building corporate corporations. Mm -hmm. We're literally sitting at those desks, sitting at those tables, building corporations. The problem is there was a lack of leadership in the home when it came mm -hmm. to having the answers. Mm -hmm. So our black families, our Hispanic families don't have the answer. Okay, let me, let me, I got to turn this shit off. So let me go ahead and say this, okay? Now, do y'all see how those grown black women, who are probably twice her age, because she ain't but 25, 26, are sitting here nodding and oohing and eyeing like this is some of the best shit they've ever heard. And we're going to have a real conversation um, and I watched a good portion of that whole interview before I even got on this topic. And to me, she wasn't saying anything that was mind blowing. She wasn't saying anything that we haven't heard before. But the reason why Dana Chanel, this is a conversation that people are not ready to have, but y'all know I'm here to make people uncomfortable. I like you to think outside the box because again, like I asked before, who co-signed her? Where did she come from? You have people who've been in the game for years, who have a track record, who have a good rapport with people, who have good reviews, and they're not able to get on Sister Circle or CNN or MSNBC and on these major platforms to promote their businesses. The reason why she's able to scam in the way that she's supposedly been able to scam is because of her looks. Let's keep that real. A lot of people ran to follow her because she's a pretty racially ambiguous Afro-Latina. Her husband is handsome, has, you know, hazel eyes. Um, she's well-spoken. You know, she comes in the guise of being a good Christian. But a lot of people ran to follow her simply because of her following and her looks. And as long as you have, yeah, see, they're not ready for that conversation. Thank you. I'm glad y'all see where I'm coming from. Okay? A lot of y'all don't want to do y'all's own research. 
a lot of y'all don't want to put y'all a lot of y'all don't want to grind when it comes to business okay anybody who started a business will tell you when you start a business from the from the ground up it takes your it takes so much of your time there's times that especially if you're dealing with like let's say companies overseas when the rest of the world in america sleep you're still up because you have to be able to get a hold of those folks overseas when you're really wanting to start a legitimate business you're not going to pay somebody with a pretty face and a mouthpiece five grand to tell you what you need to do if you had five grand to spare that was the money that you needed to invest into yourself into your business but see we live in a in a world right now we live in a microwave society where folks don't want to do the work <coughs> they want to push a button and boom a business a successful business grows folks like titles everybody wants to put ceo on their instagram cfo owner of but they don't realize with those titles come great responsibility and you can't be a successful business owner by sitting your ass in an hour seminar that you don't pay somebody several thousand dollars to write a bunch of shit on a whiteboard while you're nodding off and trying to take notes that's not how you start a business when you're really serious about starting a business you live breathe and eat that business you find out everything there is to know about that business I didn't need to take her course to figure out how to start my own tea company, to start my own tea line. I lived and breathed this. I studied it. I went through and called different manufacturers, distributors. It's a lot of work, and that is the problem. People don't want to do the work. So honestly, if she scammed a bunch of folks, I'm not even mad. It's fucked up. But maybe this will wake people up in our community to stop being impressed by people with big words and looks. Same thing with Umar Johnson. Very charismatic, handsome man. Well, before he went crazy. Excellent orator. Very articulate. When he speaks, he moves you. But with all that talking this man done did over the past 10 years, what has he really accomplished? Where's the school? Where are the programs? And that's the issue. Is that we're so, we're, we're so smitten by looks and articulateness that we just don't want to do any research. So she was scamming y'all $5,000 a pop. If you was paying her $5,000 to create an app for you, that makes no sense. You literally can Google how to make an app. And if you don't know how to make one because you're not technical, that's fine. There's all types of websites you can go on to pay somebody to create an app. An app, I have an app coming, quiet as it's kept. An app should cost you no more than $1,000 for somebody to create, depending on the type of app that you want. Once you have your app, everything on that app is supposed to update automatically if it's tied to your website or if you're the one or if you're the one updating that app, why would y'all be paying her $400 a month to update your app? So it's like a lot of y'all are not even using common sense. How does an app work? How does an app update? What what are the the key fundamentals of an app? So y'all give her $5,000 to create an app for you and then she's charging $400 a month to update your app? So imagine, let's just, just, let's just use common sense here. Let's say 40 people, right, hypothetically, pay her five grand to create this app. And every time something happens with their brand, maybe it's a new product that's out, maybe it's a new blog post, the app needs to be updated. Does she and her husband have enough manpower to have people to update all of these apps on a continual basis that you guys are paying $400 a month for? Because the way she's talking to her team, it don't seem like it. The way she's making her team sit and, you know, and, 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 you know, call out prayers after being chastised, they don't seem too technical to me. It seems like a bunch of sheeps just leading each other. So that's why for me, I didn't really speak on the whole Dana Chanel thing because I didn't give a shit. Because we're business owners, we're putting in work out there. We're not sitting in bullshit seminars and, you know what I'm saying, feel-good meetings. 
We're actually doing the work. When somebody is running their own legitimate business, trust me, they're everything. If somebody has an issue with an order, I am the customer service person. If we need to order some more supplies, if we need, if all the, the, the lovely, uh, the nail growth tea is gone, I'm the supplier. I'm the one who has to contact the supplier, let them know what all we need, pay the, 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 the payment, get everything set up on Amazon, make sure Amazon gets the shipment within a week and everything is, is, um, is done. Who, who has time to sit and play games and waste money? So you have to ask yourself, if you're really trying to go into business for yourself, are you doing it for the right reasons? Are you really trying to go into business because this is your passion? This is what you want to do? Or do you just want to look cool for the gram? You just want a title. You just want to be a part of something. Because that's what it seems like to me. It's a lot of folks who just want to be a part of something. And now that they've lost their money and there's nothing to show for it, now everybody's upset and they're running to go file a class action lawsuit. I'm not knocking them file y'all's lawsuit because if she's taking money and scamming folks, that shit is dead wrong. But at what point in time do we take personal responsibility and say, you know what? There's certain things that if I really wanted to go into business for myself, I can do the research. You don't need Dana Chanel to build you a website. You literally have websites now that are pre-built. Go on to Wix.com, choose a template, and go from there. But again, that's too much like right. That's too much work. I want somebody to spoon feed me information for $5,000 a pop. Honey, a sucker is born every day. At the end of the day, y'all allowed this woman to scam y'all because of her good looks. That's what it boils down to. Y'all follow her because of her influence and because of her numbers. Y'all weren't worried about uh, y'all weren't worried about quality. Y'all were worried about quantity, because of the quantity of followers that she has, and the fact that she's been on this show and that show and that show. That's all some of y'all needed. Y'all didn't think to go look at any reviews, go see you know have, have people really been successful using her her credit services, or can I clean up my own credit by myself? Do I need to actually pay somebody thousands of dollars to clean up my credit? I did a whole credit series for free on YouTube that helped many of people. And I'm not saying that people shouldn't be paid for their services. Don't get me wrong. Get your bag. Because some people don't have time to try and figure certain things out or to make phone calls. But what I'm saying is do your research. Because there are some legitimate people out here who can clean your credit for a good price and can get things removed. Because you need to have credit. That's not even a question. But again, you have to do your research. You need to look for quality people and not just quantity of followers. That is the difference. Um, let me see here. Put a teacup. <clears throat> I know most of my tea sippers are smart, but y'all can put a teacup in the comment section if you're one of the people who was scammed by uh, Dana Chanel. I bet you're not going to see not one teacup. Because we work with discernment around these parts. I told y'all back in 2017, it was something about her hypocritical vibe that I wasn't feeling. And I ain't checked for her since. So there was no way she could have scammed me. Because any business I've started, I put my all into it. I didn't need to go sit in nobody's seminar. I didn't need to go to some women empowerment brunch. I sat here and I did the work. And the research. And built relationships. Somebody said, I don't like K. Michelle, but on one line, I have to say the lighter eyes. Oh, the lighter the eyes, the deeper the lies, honey. Uh-uh. It may be a broad statement, but honey. Yeah, I don't. Okay, so there's one teacup. Okay. Miss Kim was honest. She did get scammed. Okay. Well, you know what, Miss Kim? Don't feel bad, sister. Don't feel bad at all. At least you're honest. Okay? But I hope that you come into my channel because you might be new here. I don't know. And you vibing off of us, we are we, we work with discernment over here and we see through a lot of nonsense. So maybe if you end up being a part of, part of the Discord group or, you know, anything like that, those are conversations we can have. You know how to avoid stuff like this. Because a lot of this information you can find online. You don't have to get it from a particular source. 
So, you know what I mean? So don't, don't feel bad. It's a lesson learned. And next time, it's just going to help your discernment become stronger. So next time you see a pretty face and she's talking whatever, whatever, you can see through the nonsense. Because that's all it is. Even what she was saying on the sister tur on the sister circle while they was oohing and on, I'm like, she's basically just saying a bunch of pretty words. She's not saying anything different. I could take this same speech coming out of her mouth and add this, you know, mush mouth person in front of it. Same conversations. So I just think at this point in time, people, oh, there's four cups total. Okay, so we see four cups total. Okay, well, out of, you know, 9,000 people who are watching, four cups ain't bad. Okay, so, you know, just, just be aware. Just have more discernment. Don't go off of numbers. Don't go off of blue check marks. Don't go off of followers. Really do your own research if you're trying to, you know what I'm saying, build a business. Create an app. If you're trying to um, clean your, your credit or build your credit, those are things that you can research for yourself. There's all types of, there's a wealth of information here on YouTube. I can't tell you how much stuff I've learned just from watching YouTube videos. But again, you have to be able to set the time aside. And there's nobody more busy than me, honey. Okay? I'm busy doing 50 million different things. But I still set time aside to learn things that I want to learn. To know about things that I want to know about. You have to do that. Because if you're starting up a business and I'm asking you questions about your product, I don't want to hear a bunch of Dana Chanel quotes. I want to know what you know about your product, not what she told you to say. So anyways, y'all, on that note, I have been, uh, we don't have like three live streams in one. I'm going to end up putting all of this together into one big video, honey, okay? But um, I'm going to go ahead and get off of here because I've been on here probably about two hours as many, you know, interruptions that we've had. But I'm going to put all this together. So I just want to thank you guys for coming through, supporting, even through all the issues. Um, I really appreciate it. I really appreciate the support. I appreciate people coming through and supporting on Discord and, you know, joining that. And like I said, we have a lot of stuff coming down the pipeline. We'll be doing virtual games and, you know, eventually virtual parties. So I'm, I'm doing a lot of stuff on my end because I want this to be my own little social media community. And to the folks talking shit because it's $5, oh, well, y'all are paying her 5000 for a seminar. So move along if it's too much for you. Okay, because for five dollars, you're in a space with like minded people having genuine conversation. You know what I'm saying? So I'm, I'm really enjoying it. Once again, the dialogue, the people I've been able to just, you know, talk to and get to know. And I can't wait till we start the virtual games. Those are going to be so fun. We've been I've been testing them out with my moderators and my admins. And we've just been having a really good time. So we can't wait till we can include the community. Of course, you know, everybody's not going to be able to play all at once. But we have it where it's going to be 100 people, can, up to 100 people can play. Um, you have to sign up. All the information will be on the Discord, and, you know, the quicker you sign up, the better. But we'll have different games, different days. We're also going to be doing our own little seminar talks. Um, we're kind of like, not really classes, but Zoom meetings where we'll be talking about mental health. You know what I'm saying? Finances. Just things like that. Just having open dialogue where we can all kind of help each other out. You know, no one person knows everything, including myself. So this is a way for all of us to just have open dialogue, you know what I'm saying, with the Discord family. So I'm just so grateful for the people who have joined and who are enjoying it. Of course, there's still little things to be tweaked that we're working on with some of the bots and stuff like that. So just be patient with us. It's only been around for a week and a half, and it's only going to get better from here. So once again, thank you guys, and I'll talk to you guys later. You guys have a good evening. And make sure you guys hit the like button too, okay? Thanks!